Apple just announced a liquid glass. Uh, oh, sorry. Hold on. Uh, okay. Liquid glass at their June 2025 Worldwide oh, Developer yeah. Conference, or WWDC 25. It's their new design language for their upcoming operating system, iOS 26, that overhauls their user interface, giving it the quality of a glass. It's dynamic, reflects and refracts its surroundings, and for the first time, unites the designs of Apple's different platforms, like iOS, macOS, and tvOS. Now, Apple's fascination with glass wasn't recent. Steve Jobs pushed for Apple to switch from plastic screens to glass for the first iPhone in 2007, after noticing the prototype's plastic screens were easy to scratch. Before that, in the year 2000, when talking about one of Apple's previous design languages, Aqua, he said that one of the design goals was, when you saw it, you wanted to lick it. I don't know about you, but liquid glass looking kind of, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, speaking of, Aqua's use of translucency, gradients, and textures was a big influence on liquid glass's style. Other inspirations include the real-time blurs of iOS 7, the fluidity of iPhone 10, the flexibility of the dynamic island, and probably most important of all, Vision OS. This is their mixed reality operating system for the Apple Vision Pro, and a big component of that UI is the usage of translucency and depth, allowing users to observe and interact with their environment. Kinda looks like frosted glass, right? Liquid glass can be seen as an example of the glass morphism design style which uses translucency and blurring to create depth and hierarchy, and is very popular in mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality, all of the different realities. Apple used to be huge proponents of skeuomorphic designs, and even now their icons tend to skew towards new morphic styles. Liquid glass can be seen as another step on that evolutionary road. In fact, a big reason why liquid glass is possible now as opposed to before is due to Apple's advances in their hardware like their Apple Silicon chip, which has the extra computational power needed to run liquid glass. I mean that translucency, specular highlighting, and refraction, all rendered in real time mind you, doesn't come cheap, you know? On the design side, Apple's industrial design studios were used to create glass with various opacities and lensing properties, allowing them to get a sense of how real glass interacts with the world. Liquid glass was a close collaborative effort between their design and engineering teams. Now, liquid glass wasn't solely a love letter to Apple's affinity for heated sand. Their primary goal was to unite the designs of all of their platforms, allowing features and controls to seamlessly fit into any screen or app they wanted, no matter the context, no matter the platform. Hierarchy, harmony, consistency. Well, as seen under human interface guidelines. Everything now fits into the rounded screen and window corners, which have become oh so popular in Apple's devices. The transparency reduces clutter and allows controls to be discrete, popping up only when you need them to. Content now occupies the entire screen. App icons are layered, adding a different way to add details. The way the glass reacts with its surroundings is also adapted, changing sizes, colors, or modes depending on the context, sort of like a gel. It is dynamic, customizable, and just so dang pretty. I am not sitting with no Saja boy. <laughs> What's up? Of course, that's a core value that Apple has when it comes to design. As Mike Stern, Design Evangelism Manager at Apple, yes, that is a real job title, I was, I was not aware this existed, puts it, everyone needs to feel safe, understand, achieve, and of course, experience beauty. This is echoed by Alan Dye, Apple's Vice President of Human Interface Design, who said that, at Apple, we've always believed in the deep integration of hardware and software that makes interacting with technology intuitive, beautiful, and delightful. Pay attention to that last word, delightful. Throughout WWDC 25, that word, along with expressive, beautiful, and joy, were used to describe all the new features of liquid glass. This brings up the question that continually vexes both designers and their users. Is good design meant to be virtually invisible or overwhelmingly delightful? Maybe Liquid Glass is trying to accomplish both. Now, not everyone is delighted with Apple's new design. There has been much discussion about the accessibility of Liquid Glass, particularly involving its translucency. What do I mean? Well, can you read this? How about this? Maybe this? Yeah, good luck reading that. Despite Apple's assurances, legibility, 
contrast and usability are chief concerns people have with liquid glass due to the translucency and blur, especially for people with vision impairments, people who are older, or maybe people who are particularly inclined for some late night liquid courage. <laughs> sure, it's more delightful, but is liquid glass more useful? But I know, it's still a bit early. Liquid glass is still in beta, and Apple is open to feedback. There are settings to adjust to translucency, tint, and blur for both users and developers, along with two different types of glass. Plus, in July, the liquid glassiness was toned down. And yeah, people weren't happy about that too, so they changed it back in beta 4. But I am sure there will be plenty of tweaking done until the release of iOS 26 in September. But what do you think of liquid glass? Excited by their translucent possibilities? Or are its shortcomings clear as day? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'm Emil the UX Lizard. Like and subscribe for more design news and videos. Thanks for watching.